Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to our series Health and Fasting. In this episode, we are going to be discussing how the digestive system works. So, the digestive system is the system of the body that is involved in the processing of any food that we eat. So, the process of eating starts with the simple fact that we will eat the food, chew it, and then during this process we will be producing saliva and this produces an enzyme called amylase. This enzyme starts to break down the food whilst it's in the mouth. We will then swallow the food and it will start its journey through the digestive tract. So as we can see in the slide, the food will start to progress down the digestive tract. So this starts in what's called the esophagus which is our food pipe and then it goes into the stomach. In the stomach, there will be production of stomach acids, which will again further continue the breakdown process of the food. The food will then pass from the stomach into the small intestine. So it will pass through what is known as the jejunum and then into the duodenum. And this is called the small intestine. From here, further digestive processes will be taking place and the food will be more broken down and be ready to pass into the large bowel. Also, whilst it's going through the digestive, the small intestine and towards the large bowel, other organs in the body will be producing other chemicals and enzymes. So for example, the gallbladder will be producing bile and this will further be used to break down the food and aid with digestion. From the small intestine, it will then pass into the large intestine where now its consistency is much softer and it is much more broken down. And then the large intestine will start to contract and squeeze and the food will be sent through the colon and then towards the rectum. So during this process, the consistency, as we've said, is broken down and it becomes much softer and the nutrients have been extracted from the food and waste products are now proceeding towards the end of the large intestine where they will then be excreted. So this is important for us to know because this process occurs without us obviously being aware of it but it occurs over a period of hours and a period of days and so food that we eat will eventually be excreted within 24 to 48 hours. So within a day or two the food that we've eaten, so say for example we ate a meal on Monday, this will probably be, be excreted on Wednesday. So it takes an average of two days for the food to pass through our bowel. Obviously we don't know this and we're not aware of this because this is happening naturally and by the majesty and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the body works and processes all of this for us without us being aware of it. But the reason we're talking about this in this program is that during Ramadan we are eating less and therefore we may not be uh, digesting as much food and we may have some effects of that on our body and we may notice some differences in what happens to the food that we eat and the term in terms of the excretion of the food. So that's just an important fact for us to be aware of when we're eating and thinking about that in terms of how this may affect us during our fasts. Another organ that is very important is the pancreas. This is a vitally important organ because this is the part of the body that produces insulin. Now insulin is a key hormone in terms of digesting and breaking down sugar. And we're going to be talking about this in more detail in another episode when we'll be talking about the effects of fasting on diabetes and diabetic patients. But the pancreas is a very important organ which produces insulin, which breaks down the sugar and helps us to absorb this and use this for energy in our body. Another very important organ to be aware of is the liver. This is vital in terms of metabolizing nutrients and dealing with waste products. So again, another very important organ that is working in the background without us being aware of it, 
but it's very important in terms of us being able to carry out our day-to-day -day functions and survive and consume the nutrients and be able to go about our normal activities. Also again, another pair of vitally important organs are the kidneys. So the kidneys are again involved in dealing with waste and obviously these are the organs that help produce urine which extracts uh, the wastes and then that's excreted in, in the urine when we go to the toilet and then this again is something that we need to be aware of because during fasting we'll be eating less and this may have some impact on the kidneys and the me metabolism of urine and us being aware of our fluid balance so this is again a very important organ that we need to think about and be aware of. Okay so bearing in mind what we've discussed so far some very simple tips to th that might help us during the month of fasting actually will help us anyway with our digestive health is thinking about how we can make our food better absorbed so it's very silly but it's worthwhile chewing your food well so make sure that when you eat you chew slowly eat slowly in fact there's a hadith from the prophet I believe which says eat your food slowly don't rush your food so it's very good to take your time when eating and make sure you chew your food properly so that at least during the process of what we call mastication the food is broken down as much as possible in the mouth so the saliva has the chance to start working and the enzyme we discussed before has, to start, has the chance to start breaking down the food so make sure you chew your food properly also eat food that is fresh so try not to eat pre-prepared food or ready-made meals or oven-made meals eat fresh food that is cooked hopefully on the day or within the, next, within the previous 24 hours. So again, this will help us to eat well and to be better able to digest our food. And Alhamdulillah, eating fresh food is always much better for us. So that's another very healthy uh, way we can try and maintain our well-being during the month of fasting. Also, make sure that when we're eating, we drink water as well, because this will help lubricate the food and help us to consume it more easily. And it's also worthwhile remembering that during these fasts we need to try and keep on top of our hydration levels as we discussed with the kidney, this is a vital organ and during the fast, particularly in summer months or when the period of fasting is long it's important to try and keep our fluid levels up as best as we can. <clears throat> so ideally drink a glass of water at the time of breaking the fast and then we can pray and then after that have our meal so that we try and keep our fluid levels as adequately maintained as possible. So bearing in mind these tips might help us to better be able to digest our food and feel better during the fasting period. Other things that we can think about is the, the amount of food that we eat. It is very hard during the summer months in the UK when the fasts are so long to try and make sure that we eat properly. We should try to avoid what we call gorging. So by gorging we mean eating very large meals in a short period of time and then going to sleep straight after that because this is not very helpful for our health. So when we eat the blood in our body is diverted towards the uh, gastrointestinal tract and obviously this is to help us break down the food and absorb the nutrients from what we've eaten. So at this time we need to try not to eat too much so that not too much blood is diverted to our uh, gastrointestinal tract. I understand it is difficult because obviously we've been fasting for a long period of time but try to eat a slightly smaller meal and then eat again a short period afterwards rather than eating a very large meal and then going to sleep straight away. So hopefully these tips will be helpful in helping us maintain a healthy and balanced diet during the month of fasting. We're also going to be discussing in a subsequent episode the types of food to eat and how we can try and help manage these long fasts in a more effective manner. So another useful tip is not going to sleep straight after eating because just the effect of us being upright helps us digest the food. Now during the process of digestion, as we said, the large bowel contracts and helps move the food along. So this, peer, this process will occur irrespective of whether we are awake, lying, standing, it makes no difference. However, the process of us standing definitely helps us to digest the food, both from the contraction of the large bowel, 
but also if we stay upright after eating, hopefully we will decrease the chance of, of, of us developing acid reflux and the food coming back up again. So that is a very big problem in terms of people who have reflux and acid coming back. One of the problems that occurs, or one of the reasons why that occurs is they may eat very late at night and then go to sleep straight afterwards so the food doesn't have the chance to go down properly. So again, another useful tip is trying not to go to sleep or trying not to lie down very soon after eating. So hopefully that will also help us digest the food and feel better and not have problems with bloating and acid and all sorts of common issues that may occur if we lie down too soon after eating. Another useful thing is to try and think how we can regulate our bowel habit because sometimes when we're not eating as much or we're not drinking as much we may have problems with things like constipation so it's worth trying to see if we can establish a, a regular time to go to the toilet and try to empty our bowel. This will help us move the food through the gastrointestinal tract and hopefully help us digest the food and have less problems and complications during the fasting period. So I understand it may not be possible but if we can try to establish the habit of opening our bowels on a regular basis that will again help keep the food going through the bowels and hope, uh, hopefully prevent us having problems like bloating and abdominal discomfort and issues that may cause us problems during the day. So that's another useful tip that we can try and establish maybe in our preparation for Ramadan before we start fasting so that we can bring this habit into our regular routine and hopefully prevent us having problems during the month of fasting. So we've discussed in a bit of detail how the digestive system works and why this is important for us to think about in the month of fasting. So as we've said, thinking about how we can help maintain a healthy and balanced diet during fasting and how we can improve our digestion are very useful and that's something that we need to be aware of and think how we can implement during the month of fasting so we have hopefully less problems and less complications. So hopefully by using these simple tips and trying to implement them before we start fasting that will help us to better maintain our digestive health and hope, hopefully help with us keeping our fasts and be less, less problems with eating because during the fast what happens is we do get hungry and we do have problems with this and this may affect our performance during the day, it may affect our concentration. So being aware of these simple pros and cons of trying to maintain the digestive system in the best working order will hopefully help us to manage the fasts from this point of view. Thank you very much for joining us for this episode of Health and Fasting. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode when we'll be discussing more important topics. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.